Hello everyone, Metal Levite Alex here with a new book review, one that heads closer to my uh, much more expert territory, and it's uh, Ri The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, A New History of a Lost World by Steve Brusat, or is it Brusatti? I apologize to you, Steve, if I screwed up your last name. And, uh, yeah, this, um, this one kind of hits a, a bit more. Well, for I can, I've been obsessed with dinosaurs. I can never not get enough of the terrible lizards. And, uh, I practically have a library of various books and movies since my youngest days. And for the longest time, I wanted so bad to be a paleontologist, but unfortunately, it... Life is cruel, and I couldn't get into the sun. I hoped I could. But either way, I'm, st I'm still enthused about it. And uh, I bought this book not too long ago. At the having been browsing through Barnes & Noble and noticed this was out, I was like, oh, I'll read it. Now, um, when it comes to most dinosaur books, I tend to usually prefer ones that are not just filled with text, but all with nice paleo art. And I love me some paleo art, especially from the photo, almost photorealistic paintings of John Sibick and Julius Sistoni, even to the much more artistic ones, like, like, uh, who, what was his name? Mark Hallett. And you go on Divi, and you'll find others that do just as good as work as they do. But, well, the exception of, well, while there are some good computer generated images, a majority of which, I are that I've seen you that you'll end up finding on like Google is like crappy flat artwork. Whereas I have a much I'm I'm much more favoritist when it comes to good old traditional drawings and paintings like this. So this is from, from what I'm us what I usually read. Although I've lately taken a I've, I've branched out to try and read more. So this is not so much a picture book as much as it's more of a novel textbook format told first person of course by by Steve right here who's fairly recent to the field compared to much more senior scientists that I've followed over the years such as Paul Serino in Chicago who he was mentored by and um Philip Curry from Alberta Canada who I actually Made a uh, talk to in an, uh, on a phone interview once for, for a high school. Which was one of the best days of my life, honestly. You know, Robert Bacher, he's another great one. And, of course, the giants of the past, like, like uh, you know, Ophniel Marsh, Ed Cope, and uh, Owen Manin. So, this, this one was, uh, so yeah, I only recently heard of Steve. But I'm aware of some of the stuff that he's he's found over these. There have been a few dinosaurs that he name drops throughout the book that I've I've read articles on for the past five or so years. So it was nice seeing a book written by a guy who's much more recent. And um like I said, it's told in first person and again there's not really much in the way of artwork except for except for um, photographs, various ones of of uh, different scientists and colleagues that he's worked with out in the field and in the lab, and of course various pictures of different fossils, like the fighting dinosaurs right here, the famous Velociraptor Protoceratops. There was another one. Oh, and the Cynornithosaurus with the. And there's just many examples. And uh, typical. Oh, Black Beauty, my favorite Tyrannosaurus of all time. Uh, Sue, Sue's great, but Black Beauty Holt is is a, is the winner in my heart and of course you have your and uh at the beginning chapters there's a there's um some drawings of different of dinosaurs and a few other animals here and there that start each chapter oh speak of the devil there's edward cope right there <laughs> so not heavy on pictures but it does keep it interesting in that regard and um a perspective steve, steve pretty much writes the book pretty uh Pretty uh, large, not overly detailed, but not vague either text. So it's honestly kind of a faster read compared to the two World War II books that I've read, one of which I covered in my first book review. And um, 
So it's one that doesn't really, I don't think will take too long if you're, if you're dedicated enough. And, um, from, you know, from his first person view, he talks about from, uh, you know, from what he's, uh, looked into it, you know, the, the evolution of the dinosaurs from their earliest days through their heyday. And of course, to how the, uh, he and others think likely contributed. In. So, and, um, you know, he describes, you know, his pH, you know, he, he blends his knowledge with personal experience from having worked with various things and, uh, yeah, his, from his PhD days to much more recent, you know, professor days. And it's very interesting. He tells, he, he, it's written very well. It's, it's easy to read, detailed, but not blame. It's pretty, it's shockingly, uh, not as bloated as I would have thought it would be for a book like this. And if if you're if you're into something that's not as picturesque as the many of the books I prefer, this is actually pretty good. And what helps this book also is that it doesn't go over for the most part, at least the usual shtick. You know, he he, he talks about some other finds here and there, like he goes into detail. Like it's organized into like um, chap chapters that kind of go by, you know, how the you know, how the dinosaurs got their start from their dinosaur morph ancestors. And he talks about a couple of he's of, you know, ones that he's, he names their competition, how they got where they are. And of course, um, you know, the different dinosaurs that became the, the dominant ones throughout the Jurassic and Cretaceous, like the sauropods, the car carodontosaurids, and of course, and many others. And of course, um, you have your obligatory Tyrannosaur dedicated chapters. Honestly, that was probably I was a little iffy about this part of the book because we get it. Tyrannosaurus is the most advanced theropod of his time. He he was the he was the he was the he was the overlord of late Jurassic Western North America. Like, did he really need an entire chapter? No, two chapters dedicated to the Tyrannosaurs. I don't know. But it's kind of at the same time inevitable because you can't really talk dinosaurs without Tyrannosaurus ever getting brought up. It's practically inevitable. Although I, so, but at the same time, T-Rex, due to how everyone's obsessed with it, did more or less open up to how we study more dinosaurs in much more detail today. Like cat scan, microscopes, and all that. And, but besides the old, old Rex, he, it's about much more obscure stuff. Here and there, like, like uh, again, the, the dinosaur morphs that he mentioned, that I mentioned, even new um, sauropod trackways in places like I never would have thought they there'd be any, like Scotland, uh, Brazil, China, of course, because there's always new stuff coming from China, like the feathered dinosaur I just showed, and uh, mm, and of you know, of course, the Rex, including some new some. Some ones like Tim or Langia, like you better stand because of the higher sea levels. So, Steve pretty much covers the wealth of both familiar and new territory. So, if you want to read, so it's definitely not a book that's, re that's filled with recycled content. There's, he's, he's, it's pretty updated with the, some, with a lot of bold new stuff. And, you know, covering not just old theories, but also bringing up new theories. And overall, I really did enjoy this book. You know, a new face for, for the modern generation of paleontology. Updated, you know, updated to much more recent uh, work. Plenty of photographs and some art to go in there, though not, though mostly primary in word format. And, um, I honestly think it's, uh, it's pretty well researched, pretty well done. And, and, uh, it's, while I prefer a much more third person perspective on when it comes to a lot of books. I, I did actually find his uh the first person account right Steve to be pretty cool cool because he describes not just his his you know dinosaur other dinosaurs and finds from his opinions and what he's uh theories he's seen or had backed up but also describes colleagues that that are both of course familiar like the one like the names I mentioned while bringing up newer kookier characters in the modern science wor world of paleontology and so it's a really nice window as to 
what the future may have in store for the for science and and uh I really did enjoy this book actually really well well written well thought out surprisingly funny in a lot of parts from what from the from a lot of the moments that Steve describes throughout his his time studying and researching and even before that and uh if you're as big of a dinosaur re, uh, enthusiast as I am, you might be, you might be some in- interested in not just got having a, a refresh on on updated uh, no, uh, knowledge on the tyrant on the history of the tyrant of the lizards, but also you know some of the newer stuff that I just mentioned here and there, from strange new dinosaur finds to even uh, reinforcing new uh, discoveries on the book. I recommend it. Find the orc. And the name the book you and get back to Neat. So thank y'all for watching this and hope I got you something new to read. So peace.